I see you, dream, believe, succeed. Let's go, man. Hey, check this out. I got another great story for you guys. I hope you guys check the last videos, but come on, let's check it out. Um, and then also, I actually am gonna upload another video after this one with some of the things that I've been doing in practice and um, just me running around the track, getting back into training and everything like that. But I got some inspiration for you guys. Come on, let's do it. So, when I was five years old, um, this was the first time, first time that I discovered that I was really different than everyone. I told you guys about the ABC story, and that was when I was four, I believe three or four. Um, you know, I'm 28, so it gets mixed up a little bit, but I, I believe I was three or four, the ABC story. And at that point, I didn't really realize the different, how different I was, even though all the other kids could see in the class, it just didn't register. But check this out. When I was five, it was around the time where it's been about two years where my parents had discovered that I had something called optic nerve atrophy, which is damage to the optic nerve, right? And so in that first two years, they were still trying to discover and find the things that, um, what does visual impairment mean? Does it mean that he's blind? Does it mean that he, what, what type of life will he have? You know, one thing that my father, uh, at first he was like, will he be able to play sports? Will he be able to do this? But you know, they just had faith and they kept going. They put me in sports and they did everything else the best way they knew how. But when I was five as a kid, just discovering things for myself, as kids do, we all discover, we all have uh, different curiosity. Um, we all have different things as kids that we are, like I said, discovering, right? And so this is when I discovered that I was visually impaired. Like my parents, yeah, they told me I was visually impaired and they said, this means that you can't see like everyone else. But it did not mean that it did not mean that uh, I actually knew what that meant. And so when I was five, we had a bookshelf in our classroom, right? And so all the kids would go over during playtime. Some people, they would pick out books. I remember there was this one time, my teacher, her name was Miss Kelly. We had a circle where, you know, the kids, we had a circle where the kids, we would talk about our favorite book. That we were that we were reading, and I know I, I can't I can't necessarily remember, but I, I remember that I had a favorite book, but I couldn't read the book actually. And while everyone was reading their lines from their book, and so it was the moment where I'm just like, hold on, what's going on? Like, what is what's happening? Like, why is everyone else able to read their book out loud in class and I can't? And why am I having so much difficulty? So one time we had playtime. Um, it wasn't, you know, it was, it was you could do whatever you want, play with the toys or read the book. And so after the circle thing happened, I was just like, hmm. So I got my friend and I was like, man, I can't see the book. And like, he was like, okay, come on. It was my good friend, Matthew. <laughs> it's funny, I just came from his wedding. I don't even know if he's gonna remember this story, but. I got him and I got someone else. I believe it was one of my friends. Her name was Alana. And these, they had, they had glasses, right? And so I went over and I picked up a book from the bookshelf and I was trying to read. I was trying to read the book, but I couldn't read the book because the print was small. And as you guys know, I use large print where I use voiceover. And now I showed you guys my CCTV you've been tuning in into my videos, you would have saw that CCTV that I use for the books to read and things like that, right? And so I look at the book and I'm just like, I can't read it. I can't read it, right? And so I'm just like, man, what's up? And so basically my friends, they was like, well, we wear glasses. Maybe you should put glasses on. And you know, this is what help us see Maybe you need to put the glasses on. And so I tried on their glasses and <laughs> everything was blurry. 
And I laugh because every single time I meet someone new, they want to discover what my vision is like. And I always say that, so every single time, you know, my with my vision, they would say, man, like, is it blurry? Like, what does it, what does it look like? They were just wondering, like, what does it look like? And I, um, I, I would say it, it, the detail is not there. But I, I laugh because when I put the glasses on, actually things were really blurry because the glasses, they weren't prescribed to me. And, and with optic nerve atrophy, you know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't have nothing to do with your physical eye, but more so your nerves. So you know that right now in technology and in the way the world works, you know, with nerves, once the, once they are damaged, there's no repairing them. And so, um, you know, I was just like, no, nah, I can't read the book. I cannot see the book. And that was the moment like, that I found out that I was different than everyone else in that classroom. And um, one thing my parents really fought hard for me was to be in the classroom with everyone else and um, just not have to uh, just really get a great education, to be honest. They fought for me to get a really good education all the time, from elementary to middle to high school, even college. In college, they told me, Marquise, you're going to have to start advocating for yourself and telling people what you can and what you what, what you may need some assistance with. And so, but yes, they really fought hard for me to uh, get a great education. And basically, when I was five years old, you know, the kids, they accepted me for who I was. They knew, they, I don't necessarily knew if they really, really understood, but they knew that I had some differences than what they had. I couldn't read, I couldn't wear glasses. I couldn't read regular print books. I had a magnifying glass in class. And um, there were some things that I wasn't able to participate in because of my vision, but they still accepted me for who I was and they really just was trying to figure out what was going on just as much as I was trying to figure out what was going on. I didn't know, like I was five, I was different. Just like I'm pretty sure there was someone else that was five years old in the class and they felt different. Um, just probably in a different way. I don't I don't know, maybe they were taller than everybody else and they was wondering why, why am I taller than everyone else? Or, or maybe they were shorter and they were trying to figure out why are they shorter than everyone else. Like I said, as five-year-olds, as us, just as in elementary, just as a society, but just as kids anyway, we are always trying to discover what's this and what's that. It's a new world to us. And so at the end of the day, I wanted to tell you guys, it's okay to be different. It's okay that you may have to do things different than someone else or different than a whole group of people and that's okay but it's going to get you success if you just accept the differences that you have and that and i'm telling you i'm telling you it is okay and at the end of the day you know kids are going to be kids and what i mean by that statement is is that kids want to discover they really want to know what's going on and it was just crazy because that was, that's mind blowing to me because it was the first time and the first time that I really realized that I can't see really good at all. And there's no correction out there for me. It's okay to be different. So like always, I see you, dream, believe, succeed. All right, I'll check out you guys next time. Positive energy all the time. Pass along, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share. And yeah.